Howdy ho, friends and foes, and welcome to Dads on Life, your weekly episodic show on parenting from a male perspective. I'm your host, Jason Miles, and with me, as always, are my co-host, Keith Bogan. Oh, sorry. Good morning, Jason. <laughs> Dave Dusenberry. Good morning, everybody. And Chad Holloway. Buenos dias. Um, I'm going to let Chad introduce this, since he's the one who brought the topic up. Um. This week's Chad, the floor is yours. And welcome back, Chad. Uh, thanks, guys, and and thank you, Jason. Um, what I what I had proposed we talk about today is uh, estate planning uh, for your for your children. And one of the things that that I've had happen in my life, and I, I wasn't a minor at the time; I was still in my twenties. But my father passed intestate without a will. And as I'm getting older now, I'm going to be fifty seven this year. I've been thinking about how to pass along things to children and how we want to um, prepare them and, 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 and safeguard them in certain ways so that we make sure that what we've worked hard for in our lives actually goes to, to our children. And I think on the other side of that, um, not only passing along assets, but also making sure that your children are taken care of when they're younger is very important because things can always happen. Um, even if somebody has younger children and it, and, and it's not at the, normal life expectancy. Uh, you know, we make a lot of assumptions about when we're going to pass. And uh, I think this is something that's very important because, um, you know, when when you have young children, if you have a if you have a spouse or not, you want to make sure that they're cared for. So there's, I think, a lot of ways that we can approach this today. And I'll start with the, the first one that, that's been more salient in my life. And that's that, you know, after you've worked you know, had a, had a pretty decent career and you've worked pretty hard. How do you go about ensuring that your, <clears throat> that your offspring, that your children have uh, some of the rewards of your hard work and, you know, and, and what are some of the things that go into that? So I know thinking about what happened in my case is I'm, I'm remarried. So I've got a son from another marriage. I've got, I'm remarried now and I want to make sure that both my, my current wife and my son are taken care of. So we, there's a lot of things that go into to planning that. Right. And I also want to make sure that when I do give the, 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 the money I give to my wife, she, she can spend it however she wants. Right. But the money I give to my son, um, as a couple of us here know, um, that first marriage doesn't always work out. Uh, and I want to make sure that that money is protected in a certain, uh, from the, from the, 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 greed or accounts of others right so i want to make sure that 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 those assets stay with my son should something happen so i don't know if you guys have wrestled with that or or not well i, but... th I think since he's of age she can't touch it pretty oh. much right? <laughs> yeah You're no 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 conclusions young skywalker um yeah, I'm thinking, no, no, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm worried a lot less about my wife coming after him. And I'm worried more, more about his, his first wife. He's not married yet. So when he gets married, is uh, there a right. way to protect that? Yeah. It, just in case, I got you. if nothing happens, then great. It's, it's, it's total, everybody's happy, but I always, you know, hope for the best and plan for the worst. Yep. Yep. So until about 10 years ago in the state of New Jersey, and this is why you should never, you should live here, Chad. You shouldn't live where you are. Uh, until 10 years ago in the state of New Jersey, uh, if you failed to change your will from when you were married to uh, something uh, that, you know, removes your wife from, from it after you get divorced, um, you were screwed. Your ex-wife would still get your money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fortunately, the guy who represented me in my divorce was the leading attorney in the uh, uh, work with the state government to change the laws here in New Jersey. So the moment you are divorced, your ex-wife is automatically eliminated from your will, whether you redo it or not. Right. That was what Somebody I was saying. I see Dave yeah. is perked up. Dave's over there. He's perked up like, really? That's great. That, that actually helps me. I like that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, my, my, my plan is to do is to uh, follow in my mom's footsteps and die in Delaware, which makes the process very, very, very easy. Um, I, you know, one thing I've learned firsthand, you know, and, and, and talking about estate planning, it's interesting because I've had I've had two examples of two drastically different 
I guess, case study, sort of similar to what Chad talked about. My, um, my dad passed away overnight unexpectedly at the age of 61. Didn't plan to go, but he was gone. Um, my mom uh, uh, only passed away a couple of years ago, but um, she was a lot more organized, uh, almost to the point of – I mean, look, I give I give her all the credit in the world, and when she passed, it made me as the executor it made things a hell of a lot easier on me. Mm -hmm. But this is this is an especially poignant topic because, you know, I think you know with my three kids, you know, how am I going to divvy that stuff up? And and to Chad's point, you never know when you're going to go. So it's it's it seems cliche to say, but it's kind of never too early to kind of start working on that stuff. Um. And, and locking that stuff down. Now, there's still a lot about estate planning that I have not done yet. And it kind of weighs on me a little bit. It needs to get done. I fully understand mm -hmm. that. And, um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, planning for this stuff and figuring this stuff out. You know, like my mom was not, didn't have a whole lot, right? She had some stuff, but not a whole lot. She was not what you would consider rich or wealthy or anything like that. Um, and I would love to get to the point in my financial arc of my lifetime to kind of get to that point where when I'm done, I have some stuff, but not a whole lot. So there really isn't anything for anybody to fight over. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's kind of that's definitely one of my goals. Um, thankfully, in my case, my siblings and I, I was the executor and my brother, my older brother and my older sister, I worked with them. Thankfully, in our case. The three of us pretty much got along and communicated openly about everything that's going on. If there's anything I know from other members of my family, that is definitely not always the case. Yeah, you be know? True. So, be true. And, yeah, I mean, and with my three kids, right now, they all get along great. I have no idea if that's going to be the case when the time comes and I leave. I don't know what their relationships are going to be like at that time. So I have to keep that in consideration, like Chad was talking about. Making sure that anything that you want to decide is ironclad, written down, so that there's no debate. My mom did that, and it helped. It helped us out quite a bit. Yeah, and I, I think a lot of times, like even if they're if somebody's getting along at the time, you know, they always say blood is thicker than water until money is involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And, and then didn't, things and change have, very quickly if there's money. Yeah, and and Dave, didn't you have the situation where you you didn't really know? You had a sister, or yeah, I mean, my sister until very late. Yeah, my I didn't learn that I had a full. I didn't. I didn't meet my. I I learned that I had a full blood sister when I was like thirteen. 15. Okay. Yeah, thirteen or fourteen. I didn't meet my full blood sister until I was thirty-five. So okay, that for was, those okay. for those that of you that are watching at home, um, my my parents, uh, before they got married, um, had well, my mom was pregnant. My dad was overseas uh, during Vietnam, and uh, my mom gave birth to a little girl who was given up for adoption. Uh, this is 1969-ish. Um, and, uh, you know, in those days, adoptions were closed. So, you know, the, you couldn't get squat. Um, when I was around 12 or 13, they, they, they had hired a private investigator to, find, to, to, to pursue her. Managed to find out what her name was and uh, attempted to make contact was was turned down. Again, I'm giving the short, short version. I can talk about this for hours. Um, long story short, right. fast forward a few years when my dad passed away in um, 2006. No, I'm sorry, 2007. Um, my, my mom still had my sister's name and discovered she was on Facebook, sent a message to her to reach out just to say, listen, your birth father passed away. If there's any information you want, you know, health history and things like that, just to just for information disclosure. Um, and well, there's a there's a long story short. Basically, that initiated a contact between my sister and my mom, which then uh, carried down to my brothers and I, and led nice. to me actually meeting her for the first time in uh, 2009. Is when I met her for right. the first time, and right. uh, ever since then, it's sort of been a you know, we're going to kind of. I, I look at her as my as my full sister because she is the product of both my mom and my dad. She is my right. full blood sister. I'm just getting to know her. Yes. So, 
when she came into our lives, my mom made a lot of adjust made adjustments to her will and things and took her into account. And basically, instead of dividing things 50 50 between my brother and I, everything was divided into thirds between my brother, my sister and I, which she did. The, she did the exact right thing. She should have. Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, I, I, I fully stand behind that. I, I don't, I don't have any argument about that whatsoever. I don't care if we didn't grow up together. That doesn't matter. You know, to, to Chad's right. point, in that case, blood was thicker than water, and it, it yeah. remained that way because both my brother and I were willing to honor that. Mm -hmm. That's what my mom wanted. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, if that's her call, that's my call. I'm not going to change. Mm -hmm. that. Like, so yeah, you know, but, but. That coming up, especially in the, in the wake of my dad passing away, made a lot of the estate planning that my mom was doing change, you know, and it, it also makes me think that, you know, as time goes on, there are going to be a lot of variables that you're going to have to take into account when thinking about how stuff is going to get passed down. You know, I think about it for my three kids and for, for my wife now, you know, like how mm -hmm. how's all this stuff going to work? There's a lot of variables. You got to figure you got to take that all into consideration. I found something that happened in my family I found very interesting. And by the way, I want to get off on a different tangent in a minute, but let me stay with this for a moment. Um, when my father died when I was 18, obviously it was very unexpected. We've talked a little bit about that on this show. Um, mm -hmm. He had set up enough so that they had, he had a will and everything passed directly to my mother and things were fine, but there was, there was not enough knowledge it's that my mother had so that uh, he had a nice stock portfolio, for instance. It wasn't like, you know, Warren Buffett, but it was it was a mm -hmm. decent guy's stock portfolio that she wasn't aware of. You're right. So, so it took somewhere between six and 12 months for her to become knowledgeable of it, during which time the guy who was managing it completely fucked it up and lost most of the money. Now, right. I don't know if my mother could have done something different, but she wasn't even aware of it to try to prevent that. Right. Um, so, that, you know, obviously he was 54, so he, he had put some things in place, but he hadn't put enough. Um, there were other things. So in the years following his passing, I started to notice that mail from the bank from my mother would be addressed to Helen Bogan dash P.O.D. And I know it took a while to understand what that meant. Payable on yeah, payable death. death. Yep. She, had said, she had redone her will right away, made my brother Joel the executor because he was the oldest um, and probably the most level-headed of the I was only 18. Um, and so that if she, one of the things she struggled with is she, it took her months to get access to all of the money that he had uh, in accounts, wherever, especially the stock stuff. So right. she changed everything in her name so that Joel would have immediate access to it. So the, right. the pay for the funeral and all that sort of thing. That's, that was a really big thing. And I, I've gotten to the point now where I'm on the verge of doing that myself. Um, I don't want my kids to know about it because they might kill me right away as, as soon as they see it. But, you know, uh, it, I think it makes sense to to do that, to make sure the stuff is available right away. You know, all 36 cents that's in the bank, you know, you know it's important to have, to, have, to have that access to it. You know what I mean? Um but you know, there, there are things you can do that make sense, but also clear the way um, having the conversations. And that's where, where this sort of is, is I, I think we're heading also is sitting the kids down and talking about it. I know in my ex-wife's family, um, she has a brother, uh, her brother, good guy, but he, he was historically famous for not wanting to talk about death, like ever. Um, it was a really, really bad story. He just couldn't face any of it. So he even though he was the executor of their will, everything was a surprise to him. Um, I mean, the, her, their mother's still awake, but uh, up awake, uh, alive. Um, but her, his father passed a while ago. Uh, I, I think he's now finally come to terms. She's 86 years old. It's time for him to be ready to be the executor for whatever is left to inherit. Uh, but um, I've had some scattered conversations with Justin and Jeremy about you know, I'm, I'm going to be redoing the will. Uh, I'm going to make sure that things are set up properly. I'm going to set up all the, nowadays it's about all the passwords, all the accounts. You didn't used to have that, you know, 40 years ago. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I put the payable on death stuff too. And, and, and the boys are sort of like, they're lukewarm to having the conversations because they still, they call me the old man, but I think they still think of me as very young. They're not, they're not 
even close to thinking about that stuff yet. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm sort of no, they don't. up to toward that. But part of what I've been doing in, in uh, for possession wise, and this is the, the last thing, I'm totally off topic here, I guess. Um, you guys are watching me uh, have a lot of fun on Facebook Messenger selling stuff. Mm -hmm. um, there's a there's a method to the madness. I've had too many friends who've had parents who passed away with houses and storage lockers full of crap. And the misery they go through because they don't want any of that shit. But then they feel all this guilt because it's all their parents' stuff. They, I should really keep some of their stuff and all that. It's a horrendous thing to watch. Um, so okay. I have been uh, not planning to you know kick off anytime soon, but I've been emptying the house. Mm -hmm. There's the, my house is like uh, minimal. We'll call it minimalistic for sure. There's very little stuff there. Because if there's any assets, it's going to be a bank account or a stock thing or whatever. It's not, or the house itself. It's not going to be the crap that's in the house. Uh, and my kids are like, you know, basically stapling themselves to the floor because they're afraid I'm going to sell them too if they're not tied down. Uh, but uh, it's it, it it creates a very clean and healthy environment where there's not a lot of clutter, and it also le alleviates them of the the need to worry about stuff, and they can focus on, okay, what do we do with the house? What do we do with the ashes? Because I'm a guy who wants to be cremated. I don't want to be buried. You know, all that stuff. They can focus on that stuff. They're not going to have to worry about the stuff, if you will. Uh, I've, I've seen that way too many times. Yeah. You know, and that's a good point. Um, you know, when my dad, my dad was the guy that kept a lot of stuff, right? So when he passed away, one of the things that my mom did, she basically went under, she underwent like a five, six year journey to declutter everything at the property. All of my dad's old stuff. I mean, he had like campers, motorcycles, firearms, tools, like all the crap that my dad had. My mom was like, I love I love your daughter. I don't love all of this stuff. It's all going to go away. And she donated a lot of it, sold some of it, gave some of it away, was just like, I don't, my mom was like, I don't need all of this stuff. And I don't want you guys having to deal with all of this stuff, to your point, Keith. You know, and I I have every intention of, of approaching things the same way. I will say I just recently moved from a big house to a small house. And there's nothing that makes you want to throw everything you own away more than moving. Yeah. Um, it's It sucks. And it it because it forces you to look at everything that you have. Especially when you go to a big from a big place to a small place, it forces you to look at everything you have and really take in the fact that you know you can't you can't ignore the the stuff that's 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 been up in the attic for ten years because now you actually have like you can't just kind of tuck it away and forget about it now you actually have to do something with it. So, I for me I think it's going to end up being a healthy thing and I think I'm going to approach things like Keith and just like. My kids don't want any of this crap. They're going to have their own lives. They're going to make their own decisions. They have their own style. They don't need any of my stuff. You know, um, some stuff I'll wilt it up if they so choose, like like my instruments and things like that. Um, you know, they'll they'll probably want to keep one of my you know one of my old four string bases or five string bases just kind of hanging around just as a as a memory of me or sell the damn thing. I don't care. Um, but yeah, I think cutting down on stuff in addition to all the paperwork and arrangements that you got to make or you know the two big things the best things that you can do you know for ultimately for your legacy like you know i remember my mom as being very sweet and general um and and gentle and an awesome person but i also remember her now for being very organized and very prepared uh because of what she did and the time she took and the the, the arrangements that she made for when she eventually passed you know, that's a big thing. I give her a lot of credit. for that. Yeah. And, and I, th I think my, my mom had the same is similar. Um, so my grandparents passed and she was she's like, oh, I'm just going to she's complaining about cleaning out the house. My grandma liked to keep everything. She had all kinds of little knickknacks and little articles she cut out and all that stuff. Right. So and she had to go through all the books, like flip through, make sure there wasn't any money hidden in there. Um, <laughs> but uh she just had somebody come in and like she she kind of got all the the clutter out and then she just had somebody come in and just auctioned off the house these two ladies came in and they just said they just auctioned off every item in the house and then so my and my mom has never been big on uh, having a lot of things she's always been very minimalist 
But mm-hmm. now, especially, she's really focused on, and she tells me, she goes, oh, when I go, you're not going to have to worry about any of this stuff. You're just going to have to, you know, just do these few things. I'm going to have everything. So, and, and my mom's pretty organized, too, like Dave was saying his mom is or was. And, um, you know, so so that'll be prepared. Of it. And and to, to your point, too, Dave, that, that's kind of how I am. Like, I'm, I'm not collecting that much stuff at this point. I'm, I, mm-hmm. I'd say now but my big thing is trips and those kinds of things. And, you know, so we probably got some pictures and things, but I don't know the last time I bought something big or nice for the house. It's been a little while, but uh, you know, and, and obviously my wife's younger than I am. So we're going to buy some stuff, but she'll have that. <laughs> so mm-hmm. she'll have that to, to, to move. And but that's her problem, right? <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. So. Okay. I'm interested in your take on this because obviously of all of us, you have the youngest kids, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, is this something that, you know, like you and your wife have thought about for you guys? Because you guys are more on the young side. Like, is this something that you guys have thought about? Yeah, uh, we haven't done it yet. But, yeah, we've thought about it. Um, we're actually kind of just going through something, waiting on the pro- waiting for something to come through. Um, my wife's aunt and her husband, um, great aunt. And her husband, they didn't have kids. So they had um, a bunch of great niece, uh, grand nieces and, and nephews. And um, we're, they're all scattered all over the place here and there. My brother-in-law was the, is the, I think he's the executor, but he, he's the one, my, no, my father was the executor. But he's the one who did a lot of the arranging and things like that. Well, Steve passed away, um, sadly, in April of 2020. With his few, he he passed away on Good Friday in 2020. Um, so 2020 was a, the beginning of the pandemic was a fucking disaster for my wife's family. Yeah. It just you have to have, planning a funeral in in the beginnings of that, not easy. Yeah. Um. So. My brother-in-law um, goes over to do some stuff because she finds a bunch, bunch of paperwork and all this and that. And my brother-in-law is looking through it. And he goes, Judy, come here for a second. And he goes, what is this? Oh, Stevie made a bunch of investments. He's like, Judy, there's $900,000 here. <laughs> It's a nice discovery. She's like, wait, what? He goes, there's about 900000 here, and that's not including the house. She's like, oh, okay. So she's arranged, she arranged everything, and it was all divided to the nephews and nieces, which includes my wife and my brother-in-law. So, um, like I said, she, and she passed away January. So we're, you know, waiting on that. So we're, I wouldn't say we're dealing with this. We haven't had much of contact with anybody about it. We're just waiting on it. That's it. Uh, my my parents, I pray they've got everything straightened out. I'm sure they do. Because if they don't, this headache, the headache is going to be horrible. Um, yeah. I mean, my my sister and I, my sister and I have always been on the same page on everything, pretty much. My sister's my rock, and and I'm very important to her too. So, but I've I've seen it happen. I know what death can do. Uh, but I will put a caveat to that of what death can do with outside influences. I would say more than mm-hmm. anything. Mm-hmm. Um, if you catch my drift. <laughs> Yeah. Um we we you know my 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 brother in law is a lawyer. Mm-hmm. And we trust him. So it's it's just a matter of we just need to sit down and figure it out. Yep. And we will. Actually when when uh, when my wife walked in the room a little while ago, she said, We've got to do that. I know. I know. <laughs> we do. Um, 
But, you know, it's just right now we'll get to it when we get to it, which should be soon, though. We'll probably try, maybe, maybe I'll call talk to my brother-in-law next week or two and set it. We can do it early in the fall. We'll sit down and go out and do they go out to dinner and then go back and sit there and arrange some of it. At least start start arranging it. Yeah. Um, it's it's coming, it's coming. You're we know we got to do it. You're definitely in a different place because you no, know, I mean I I love your girls and all that. They're wonderful kids, but I don't think you're at a place where you're going to sit them down and say, "Well, this is what's going to happen when if we die uh, and leave you everything." It, they're still going to guardians. They're still going. You know, someone's going to take care of them. They're not right. going to have any knowledge of the finances or anything like that. Uh, it's right. a little different, you know, for a Frankie, uh, you know, or, or, or Justin or whatever, uh, Jeremy, um, because they're going to be handed the keys, if you will, uh, to to at least their portion of it. Um, yeah, it's more it's more than uh, that, more than likely. I mean, we we have to discuss that. Um, to me. The good thing is. um It's not immediate, but both my nieces are off to college or will be uh, soon. So that it might be a little easier to arrange. I personally would like to keep the, if God forbid it, it happens before they both graduate high school. I want to keep them in the area. I want to keep them in Old Bridge if we can find a way to keep them in Old Bridge. That's my first thought of, you know, there's so much. They, they've grown up here. There's so much here that I hate to ship them off the fair lawn or anywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, especially as much as I as much as I feel like my brother-in-law has a room. He's got two young kids of their own. They're even younger. I mean, they're five and or four and one so i don't want to put yeah. the undue stress on them and you know they gotta try to and uproot everybody's life if we can avoid it that's one thing i'm gonna to try to avoid is uprooting everybody's life yeah and i think that's some good stuff i know when we were younger frankie's mom and i had a plan put together for him and if you know if we were to to die in a common disaster we had somebody who was going to we identified his new parents or whatever the people who were going to raise mm -hmm. him Mm -hmm. had some insurance so we made sure we, we kind of had backfilled on that in case it, something either happened to me or to us then we had some insurance to cover it probably wouldn't be everything but uh, you know a portion of, you know mm -hmm. most of his life would be covered i think yeah. uh by that um and then the other comment i was going to make is like just you know I, and jason i think your parents own a business correct mm -hmm. so that that seems like it's much more complicated than just transferring Mm -hmm. aspects, you know who's going to operate mm -hmm. who's going to different things that go along with that but but I, but our earlier conversation about talking with our kids you know especially because you're obviously an, an adult male and it'd be nice for you to know like what's going to happen and, you know if something happens to just know how to just put the plan in place mm -hmm. because there's a there's a lot of a lot of people all the workers are relying on that as well mm -hmm. so but yeah, that it, it, it's tough, and it really like in, in different places, it, it, it you have to do different things. And I remember I had a professor years ago who said, you know, it's it's very interesting the income curve. He says because when you're young and you have you need to buy a house and you have a family and you need money, you don't make money. But then right. of course, as you're older and you learn things and you get wiser and your knowledge base becomes much more valuable, your kids mm -hmm. are grown and you have lots mm -hmm. of money that you don't necessarily need. <laughs> Right. You know, I needed that money when I was young. I don't need. Yeah. I need a lot less yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, that that's a good that's a good point. Um, now, I mean, I'll I want to go back to one thing you mentioned: payable on debt. Um, anybody know the origins of that? Say that again. No. I anybody don't. know the origins of payable on death? No, no, but but I do Bible. know. Okay. The Bible: all sins are payable on death. But I do know that that stuff passes outside of a will or trust. If you yeah. have the, mm -hmm. if you but, have the, but the, or, but the origins oddly a religion. Yeah, and I mean, you, they talk about separation of church, and well, in this in this aspect, 
church and a state, not state, but church and a state. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, it's a biblical reference. Um, there's actually a band that took their name after it. Yep. Uh, a Christian yep. metal band. Christian new metal band, let's call them. Um, yep. But yeah, it's it's a biblical reference. And Keith's like, what? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. Um, I mean, obviously, there wasn't a lot of estate planning in the Bible, but I mean, we all know the reference because... So if you know so much, was that Old Testament or New? Old, I believe. Therefore, the book that we both use. Good job. There you go. I don't think that's new. It's it's that's low. That's low early on in the in the exactly exactly. It predates Jesus. There you go. But yeah, no. Um, you know, and I and, and I think as as parents with our kids, I think we think of it almost in two different ways, right? So when the kids are younger, you have to think, well, they can't take care of themselves. I need to make arrangements so that, God forbid, something happens, they can get to the point where they can take care of themselves. And then once they get to the point where, well, at least they can reasonably take care of themselves. I don't know if they ever actually can fully yeah, really. parents. But when they get to the point where they can at least pretend to be self-sufficient, that kind of changes the dynamics in how arrangements and executorship and how some of these things kind of, you know, how they get enacted or how they're triggered, you know? Um, like for me now, with my kids, it's weird because of of my three, I would probably lean towards, I mean, I, my wife gets first shot because that's the way things work. But of of my three, I might have my youngest, who's 15, I would lean towards him being my executor. Because I think of my three kids... He's the most organized. He's the most organized. He's the most logical. He's the most even-tempered. He's the... He's the... Um, personality rock of my three kids. I love them. They all have... I. They're amazing in all their different ways, but I think in terms of logic and reason and and, and approach, an even keeled approach, my youngest would be the one that I would choose. Having met having met two of them, possibly seen the third, um, I would agree with that. Yeah, I've yeah. I've met you know I met your boys. We met your boys, mm -hmm. Keith and I. I think Doug did too, for a second. Um, unfortunately, he's not here with us today again um but He's yeah that, i would i would yeah i would uh i would tend to agree with you on that yeah yeah and and you know it's weird to think about that because you know i think like if, if in my situation my mom chose me to be the executor um and i think it was probably for a lot of the same reasons rather than going with the oldest which would be my sister rather than going mm -hmm. with my brother who is single, and, or well, no, John's married, but has no kids. Married, yeah. yeah, married. I'm not used to saying that. He just got married. He was together with his with his girl for like 15 years. They just got married, so like it's I'm still weird. But um, at the time that she passed, he was still single. Um, mm -hmm. and it it's it, and I guess yeah, I, I I she had her reasons for choosing me to be executor. Um, I I don't know the specifics, but I think a lot of it was because. I seem to have a more level head and a better personality to deal with potential clashes that could come up if they did come up. Uh, and I think right. that's something that you got to factor in for those of us with, with, with multiple kids like Keith and, 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 and Jay and, and whatnot, like making that decision on who gets to run the show, you know, even Chad, you were talking about it. If there's a mutual, like if eh, both the authority figures suddenly go away, how do you plan that stuff out, you know? Yep. For me, it's relatively simple not to insult Jeremy, but Justin's the accountant. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a no brainer. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You know, and the, the other thing that I've heard that people do sometimes, and I actually, uh, this happened with an ex, was that when her grandpa died, <clears throat> they gave her so much when she was 25. Maybe it was 18. I think upon passing, they gave him, gave her some. 
And then like five years later, they gave her a, a larger sum. And then five years later, the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So that somebody had, you know, they have a chance to kind of fiddle around and, you know, in your twenties, you know, and ever everybody's not like this, but, but some people are right. There's a chance to mm -hmm. actually manage the money. And, and then if it just kind of goes poof and disappears, Oh, I bought that new car or whatever, and it's gone then they have a second chance at it and they can kind of learn from that. And then the, then the third chance is just kind of, okay, I hope you've learned by now, but here, here's everything. So, and um, Jay had, a, and this is kind of on a tangent, but Jay had this, this story earlier about um, <clears throat> the uh, family members passing without children. So I knew somebody who they actually, if you guys heard of Stiefel, Stiefel Nicholas brokerage. Mm -mm. Okay. So it's a, it's a big brokerage in the Midwest and they do a lot of different things. But um, one of my, my ex's grandpa started the mailroom, worked his way up to senior vice president. And he was real good friends with the CEO and the CEO and his wife, they would always invite the CEO and his wife over for like Christmas and Thanksgiving and just really took care of them as they aged. And so when they died, they didn't have any children. So they left them like 3 million bucks. Just wow. friends. And that and that was years ago. That was in the seventies, so that was a That's lot a rough of money. Life. Yeah, I, I so. need to I need to have a rough life like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I think it was the Needham. I can't remember their names, but um, her dad gave me the guy's pocket watch. But Stiefel Stiefel is a big. It's a big company. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, that's just kind of a tangent, but. It's wild. You know, you never, you know, you hear stories like that. I mean, Lord knows my kids aren't going to experience anything like that when I go, but yeah. you know, you never know the impact that you can make on somebody and, and, and how it can translate, you know, right. I mm -hmm. mean, I would yeah. love to be able to do something like that for my kids, you know, or, you know, got, you know, if, if like in my brother's case, you know, he, he doesn't have any kids, you know, how he's planning his estate stuff. I'm not sure. I know he's factoring in like my kids to, to get, a good amount of the stuff that he has, but I'm sure he's changed it a little bit now because in re reuniting or uniting with my sister, you know, now it's, it's not just my three kids that he has. He also has my sister's three kids. So I'm sure he's had to make some changes around to take them into account as well. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting when you, we, we, and I'm not in a position to think about it because I actually have kids, but, when you don't have those direct lines to pass stuff down to what the hell do you do with it? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. for those of us in our audience that are listening to that, if you're in that situation, you know, chime in, let us know, you know, this is mm -hmm. something that we would love to, to open up to, you know, to all of you out there too. Um, right. There's a million and one different ways to go about it. You know, are you one of those that, you know, are you afraid to talk about it with your kids? Are you somebody that, maybe shares too much about it with your kids. Are you, you know, are you a planner or do you, you know, or do you delegate that to the person that you're with to do all the planning? You know, like it's, it, it yeah. Love to hear about it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and determining who to pass to, there's a, there's another situation. So in my family, so my, my sister's an addict and she's kind of, I had lunch with her a while back, but uh, I had probably before that I probably hadn't seen her in probably six years or so. But my mom already told me and and that she is my my sister is planned out of the will and it's going to her children. So I mean that and that's another situation. Like, mm -hmm. what do you do in those situations and how do you make sure that everything's passed along appropriately and you get the the biggest benefit for the people who you want to benefit from your assets, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. And that's the hard part of this stuff is, you know, while you're alive, people that you love, sometimes you gotta make hard decisions about it. Yep. You know, um, I mean, that came down amongst my, my, uh, my upper family when my, when my grandmother passed away, um, you know, there were some, some pretty hard decisions on that. Um, you know, she, she, uh, she'd passed away. Uh, my dad was supposed to be the executor of her estate and unfortunately my dad passed away before she did. And when she passed, it was, there was chaos and, and shake you know the fallout that to this day has affected my aunts and uncles um 
because you know people strongly believe that there were assets there that should be theirs and and things didn't shake out how they thought it was you know and right. i think a lot of that is because they just didn't talk to each other they made assumptions and judgments and didn't talk to each other and weren't on the same page as the process went through through for reasons that are theirs you know there was animus amongst that crew in various shapes which i don't i don't begrudge them they have their reasons that's cool but you know, I, I saw that and I thought about that a lot when I was dealing with my brother and sister, you know, when my mom passed. And and it really can go either way. You know, feelings get raised, obviously, when you lose a loved one, whether it's feelings of love and admiration or feelings of just downright hatred, which happens too. both of those are mm -hmm. highly motivating factors. And when you're dealing with high levels of emotion and money, it can go sideways really fast. That's why it's important to plan. And it's important to lay things down black and white as specific as you can to make sure that there's no lost in translation moments that come up as stuff goes down. Right. Right. Yeah, and I think that relates back to the, the comment I made earlier about blood is thicker than water until money's involved. Yeah, it is. It is. And, <laughs> you know, and, kinds of uh, like for, in my part, like when my grandmother passed away, I wasn't expecting anything. I figured, you know, her kids would take care of that, blah, 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 blah. And it's, 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 um, it, 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 it makes me feel sad. It really does that, that something like that can basically break family ties as hard as it did. Um, you know, for us extended family that has like, you know, I say this all the time. I, I, I love my aunts and uncles very much, all in their own individual way. Um, mm -hmm. And to see them kind of separate, you know, to see parts of my family kind of separate like the four winds uh, is tough. It sucks, you know? And mm -hmm. for me, it motivates me to want to make sure I take care of things in a way that as, as, as much as I can prevents that from happening. I realize it's ultimately not going to be up to me because it's going to be up to however they choose to execute based on what I write down. But, mm -hmm. but I think about that a lot, and I know that my family is not the only one that's dealt with stuff like that. You know, right. um, you have a matriarch or a patriarch, a leader of the family, a figurehead that, when they pass from this world, now sometimes the the family that's behind is rudderless. You know, like now, what the hell do I do? You know, right. uh, yeah, Point. yeah. I I had a situation when my dad passed. He um. Again, he died in test state, but he had a house that he was selling on a contract for deed. And it, was, it wasn't it was in a great area. So I had somebody go out. I needed to make sure it had insurance on it and all this stuff. So I sent the insurance guy out to take a look at it. And he says, well, he goes, you know, there's like this real vicious dog on the front porch. And he says, so I had to go around to the side and knock on the door and and to talk to the tenant and the, who was buying it. And he says, and she answered and she, he goes, hey, that dog's going to bite somebody if they come up on that porch. And she goes, that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm like, can you please, please, please write this policy as soon as possible? <laughs> That's funny. So, so so that happened, but um um <laughs> and an another it's kind of an ugly That's case. Funny. Sorry. Was I knew somebody that uh, yeah, my life uh was that um <laughs> a family member, my aunt, was taking care of her mother in law. For like I, I don't know how long it was probably two or three years in her lat of her last years and her mother-in-law so my my uncle's father was a doctor kind of in the in the golden years of medicine right so they were they were very wealthy and my aunt was taking care of her for a couple of years and my aunt's just sweet and just does every anything for everybody right I mean she'll she just like gives from her from her heart so she did that and was taking care of her and this lady and, and I, I'd been around her just a, a handful of times I did not like her. She was Cruella de Vil is who she was, you know, just kind no, of wealthy, yeah. dressed up nice and just driving behind her car, just like would run over a puppy if she could. And probably not. But, you know, that's just kind of my mind. Not yeah. not a not a nice lady. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in my, and uh, so um, my uncle had a brother and a sister. So when his mother passed, she had written my uncle and his wife who were taking who had taken care of her for all those years out of her will. And I just, I was just like, I wow. couldn't believe it. I mean, but that just, that just solidified that Cruella DeVille mm -hmm. mentality in my head. You mm -hmm. know, I'm like, how, how bad can somebody be 
to do that. You know, somebody opened up their home, you gave up a bedroom for you and just take, took care of her. It's crazy. But I know that's off talk to about taking care of kids, but at the same time, I'm like, they're a bunch of jerks out there. You know? Yeah. You know, and, and it just, I mean, family is family, you know, like there are, I say it all the time. I, you know, if my dad were still around when a lot of the stuff with my aunts and uncles shook down, I don't, I don't think it would have, I don't think it would have been as nuclear as it was because my dad was very level headed as the oldest. He was the, he was the one that kind of, he wasn't afraid to talk to people even when they had conflicting personalities, which my mm -hmm. family does to a high yeah. level. Um, you know, and I think him passing really, like it just allowed a, a larger bomb to, to go off and basically blow the family to pieces, you know? Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I don't want that for my family. I really yeah, don't. Absolutely. I don't. My brother, I, I, I think my brother and I both saw that go down. You know, thankfully my sister wasn't really part of that because we didn't really know her. She has her own family and her own dynamics that she's kind of grown up with and and messed with. But man, that's it's and and it sucks, man. It, it, like for for me and for for the few cousins that I have and the extended family, it's just like, what are you gonna do? You know? And, oh, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very mm -hmm. interesting too that, that your, your dad could have been that leveling force because I think, you know, every family has one of those that's, yeah. who, like, who's got that personality and who you, you, you take an explosive situation and you put them in the middle of it and they diffuse everything, but without them, it's a, it's a disaster. Things, things just go nuts. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that's exactly what happened in my family. Um, and I think that's a big part of like when you choose of who's going to manage your stuff, when you go, do you have somebody like that in your family or, or that you trust enough to allow to do that? Some, some people don't, you right. know, and in those cases, what do you do? Like if you don't have anybody that you trust to, to manage your stuff and, and carry out your, carry out your wishes when you're no longer here to take care of it, what the hell do you do? Yeah. You get mm -hmm. lawyers involved, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah unfortunately, it's pretty much, or you can do. Hmm. Hopefully, none of us have to be in that situation. Hope yeah. not. And hopefully, none of you out there get into that situation either. <laughs> Good luck with that. Cool. But, uh, well, should we summarize? I think so. Anybody have anything else, else to add? Well, before one of us kicks off, yeah, we should probably summarize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess the the takeaways from from my perspective are, you know, if you have if you have young kids, you have to plan for their future, and and those are the worst situations, I think, because it's usually an unplanned, an unplanned, mm -hmm. mess, right? So you have to plan right. both financially and socially, like familiar, who what who are they going to live with? Yeah. Who who do you mm -hmm. trust to raise your kids like you would have raised them or or close to that, right? Yeah. So I think that's right. the important thing. And, you know, whether it's whether it's a, a dad kicking off or uh, the parents both in a common common accident or common disaster, as they say, you know, in a, in a car wreck, for example, what happens to them? You got to plan for both situations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and it, or you have and a it, situation like yeah, with Brian, it, who uh, it took a uh, it was a separate of separate times, but he lost his sister and brother in law, both. Uh, at young ages and he raised took over raising the uh their kids so uh yeah, yeah. It, it's not easy yeah but yeah. well, and i mean in my, in my situation too i know i've i've talked talked about this in the past my my mother is now raising my nephew whose mother is, is uh not fit necessarily to take care of him and his father passed you know at a, mm -hmm. at a young in his 50s at a young age mm -hmm. i would say you know, being 57, you know, in his 50s is young age still, I think. Um, but now my mother, uh, who is his grandmother, is now a mother to him. And if something happens to her, he's going to come with us. That's the plan for him. So then that 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 creates a, another dynamic. But he'll, yeah. you know, my, my mother has, you know, a portion of funds that she would provide for him to to be raised and everything. But but yeah, I mean, those situations, I think, happen happen more frequently than we than we'd like. Um, mm -hmm. you know I and guess. i think and if you have older kids you know i think there's three things there's a fill out your beneficiary forms dudes 
and do that. Like, do that because that matters. Um, plan it out, you know, get your wills written, you know, have your plan in place. And as if you can, if you have, for those that are involved in and receiving your will, if, if they're, if they're of the mind to, to be trustworthy, you know, hopefully, um, you know, be transparent with them, you know, as much as you can, you know, say, look, this is because I, I feel the more transparent you are with everybody involved, you, you don't have control when you go, but at least everybody will know where things are when you're on the same page. My mom was transparent with my both my brother and my sister saying that I was the executor, was transparent with what all the numbers were, what all the percentages were, where everything was. I had copies of all of her paperwork before she passed, like four or five years before she passed. She gave me mm -hmm. copies of everything and said, hold on to this, keep it handy. And I was like, what the hell are you giving me this for? Like, you don't, you're not going anywhere anytime soon, but her foresight paid off. I had everything basically. I, I, I had to go looking for a couple of things, but it wasn't that bad. Um, right. I had everything in front of me and I will say this as a as a as a final thought for those that are taking care of you, if you can, only because this was an awesome experience for me. My my mom took out a like a a small life insurance policy. I think it was like eight thousand dollars, right? Mm -hmm. Not big. Premiums are very low. The entire purpose of it was to cover funeral and final expenses. That's it. That's all it was for. It was a small policy just for a little bit of money to literally take care of paying for the funeral home, take care of the, the burial or interment, take care of the vendors, flowers, all of that stuff. And of everything that I managed when I was dealing with things, that's the thing that mattered the most to me because I was able to take care of any arrangements that were there without the financial burden of, of worrying, how the hell am I going to pay for this on top of all that other stress? I, I advise, I'm doing it. I advise, if you can, everybody do it. Because whoever's running your show after you go, to take one burden off of their mind while they're making arrangements for you, mm -hmm. priceless. Yeah, priceless. Yep. I, I agree with that. And I, um, so I've got I've got an insurance policy to do the same thing. And actually, I took out an insurance policy on Frankie when he was born to cover, you know, and heaven forbid anything happen when they're young, right? But, but now he's going to have a nice insurance policy. You know, here I, th I think it's almost paid off. Uh, so I'm gonna have it. It's gonna be paid up. Uh, it's gonna be um, what they call it, universal life or whatever. It's for it's it's good for his life. It's not a term policy. Um, so he'll have that on his own as well. That will provide for any any type of expense like that. My mother did the same for me. Yeah. Correct. When I was born, she she took out a life insurance policy as well, uh, mm -hmm. and just so now I've got that which is paid up and that can cover my funeral expenses now and that that'd be fine but you know just a couple quick things on some of the stuff you said the payable on death the beneficiary those things are so important especially if you have a spouse because that just transfers ownership to that person that yeah. person can then go down and pick up that money right then there's yeah. not a delay versus a will where with a will usually that involves like it's, it's a transfer but you have to have certain proof okay i need a death certificate i need your identification yeah. so there can be a delay you know, a week or two of that to, to get money mm -hmm. or maybe even longer, depending on where you are Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, with a trust. If you put that money in a trust, then the trustee can transact business on your behalf right. uh, after death as well. So that's, you know, just some of the differences in, in those things, but the, but the yeah. POD that's good for having an account and just transfers outside of probate and it just transfers the ownership just goes to that person. Right. Yep. So, and that's a good thing to to for operations if if you have a spouse so they can continue operations in the house or you know for kids just simplify if, if that's all you've got then it makes it simple for the kids they don't have to go to court and all that kind of stuff and saves them some yeah. expense some time um, as well so yeah I think you know as, as we're talking take care of the kids when they're younger when they're older you know just make sure you have everything uh, designated early on and that you talk to your talk to your children about what you want to do so that they're not in the, so they're not in the, in the dark about it. Yeah. Yep. I think that's a pretty good place to leave us for this week. Okay. Uh, we can always pick this up at another time. Um, so from all of us here at dads on life, take care everybody. And of course, Keith, eat my shorts. There today is that today was brought to you by dads on death. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Holloway funeral homes. <laughs> Look at the fun and funeral. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Take care, everybody. <laughs>